In today's video, I'm gonna share how I get the RE Log film look with the Canon EOS M RAW video. I'm gonna break down step by step what I'm doing in DaVinci Resolve, as well as MLV app, which is the app that you use to process all these raw files that come out of this camera. This is the original EOS M, not the M50 or the newer ones. This is the original from 2012. And I'm gonna go through step by step the settings that I'm using, and also a website where you can get the best 4K film grain for free. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, so first things first, why are we doing this in the first place? Why do we want that film look? Obviously, you know, we've grown up with these types of films. I've binged a lot of movies in the past and I just love that film look. I love that grain. Uh, my favorite movies, I love Never Ending Story, Jumanji, Blade Runner, all those films that have influenced, you know, my perspective of the world. And they inspire me to have that passion to want to, you know, create something and inspire others as well. And I've just tried hard to get that film look going, um, especially on a budget with this EOS M. So that's what we're going to go through today. And first things first, let's start off with the film grain. It's a free website. It's called Free Film Grain Plates. So you scroll down to the bottom, you can get grain for Super 16, uh, Super 35, 35 mil, all that stuff. It's all free, it's about 1.4 gig. Uh, so you just download the file and it will come up as a video file that you can put into your editing program. Now, if you have seen the last video where I talk about shooting Super 16 on the Canon EOS M, then all the footage shot in that video had grain set to about 50% opacity and they were all free from that website. So go ahead, check that website. I don't run it or anything. Uh, it's just free, no subscription required. Download the file and just have some fun getting that old film look. Now the part of that film look is using vintage glass. You know, they soften the digital look that you get from these digital cameras. This is a Rollei HFT planner. You know, it's made in Germany. These are old lenses and they just have the character that you can't get with these modern lenses, which are really clinical. So right now I'm gonna share my workflow of getting RE Log C with the Canius M RAW, how I process it and how I grade it and just get that film look going. So without further ado, let's do it. So here I am on my desktop and when you shoot Magic Lantern RAW on the Canon EOS M, the files that are saved are .mlv files. So you just can't double click and open them as you would normal video files like .mov. These need to be processed. And in order to process them, we use an app called MLV app. It's for free, it's for Linux, it's for Windows and Mac OS. So what we do is we drag and drop these clips into the library and you'll see them come up. So here we have the shot that was taken with 2.2K RAW on the Canon EOS M and Magic Lantern. Straight off the bat, you can see it looks quite good. You know, the skin tones are just there automatically. It looks fantastic for a camera of this price. And on the right side of the panel, it's a bit like Photoshop or Lightroom. You know, you've got all these processing tools to play with, vibrance, clarity, uh, you know, light strength, dark strength, all these things that you can do. But this is not the workflow we're looking at today. Today, we're looking at processing this footage using RE. So I'll show you how to do that. Now, what I normally do is go into settings and then I export these .mlv files as Cinema DNG. You can choose a range of different, you know, codecs such as H.264. Uh, you can do H.265, ProRes. You have a wide range of options to choose from. So what I normally do is Cinema DNG uncompressed, and I have some examples here that we will look at in DaVinci Resolve in a second, and I also have .mov files. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to select ProRes 4444. Uh, which is about 12 bits. So 422HQ is 10 bit and quadruple four is 12 bit. This is what I normally go with if I'm going to do ProRes. And over here, you can see that you can resize your footage. You can upscale it. So if I recorded in 2.2K, I can click resize and then change the aspect ratio or resolution that I want to upscale to. Now, if you are planning to export the audio, make sure you select export audio. In this case, I'm gonna put music over in the background, so I'm just not gonna tick that. So click close, and then we can get to converting this to RE Log C. Now before you do that, if you wanna change the white balance, you definitely can because raw data is very efficient. So if you wanna you know, slightly change the white balance to cold or warm, then you can definitely do that uh, before you process the clip. Otherwise, it'll be a bit more difficult to change in post. So if you scroll all the way down, you'll see profile presets. Now this is raw image straight from the sensor. So if I click select preset, I can encode. I can get all the data, all the raw information from the sensor 
and convert that to a different curve, you know, Alexa log C, I can choose Cineon, S log 3. So if I click Alexa log C, you'll see now it's being encoded into a log C curve and this is what we're going to grade in DaVinci Resolve right now. So if we go over to the information tab, you can see the settings. So you can highlight all the clips you're ready to export and then go over to the export tab and select the folder that you wish to export to. You can rename it if you wish, uh, but we're just going to go with that. Click save and then you'll see that it's exporting ProRes quadruple four. All right guys, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve and the first thing first, here are my settings. So it's DaVinci YRGB color managed and it's SDR Rec 709. So output color space is sRGB and that's pretty much it. So if we go over to master settings, I've got my timeline resolution set to 3840 by 2160, which is 4K and playback frame rate. Now these clips here, these are Cinema DNG from the EOS M and Magic Lantern. And you can see these don't need any grading. Well, maybe with the shadows and stuff like that. But Cinema DNG, it gets the raw colors straight out of the camera, the Canon EOS M, and it looks fantastic straight out of the bat. So not much processing had to be done um, for the last video about the Super 16. This is with the C-mount uh, Cosmica lens, 12.5 mil. And if I just go over these clips, you can tell that, I mean, they look fantastic straight off the bat. You do notice that there are pink highlights, and to fix that, you just go to Camera Raw, Project, Select Clip, Highlight Recovery. So look at the highlights, pink. Click Highlight Recovery, and they are white. So you can press Option 1, and highlight these ones that have the pink highlights, and press Command 1 to paste your settings. And there you go, they are now fixed. Now in the last video with the Super 16, I went to HDR, and I just lifted up the exposure for this clip to fix the black, so something like this. And for me personally, I like the HDR Global better than the offset in the primaries. So the High Dynamic Range tab is the one that I mostly use when I want to touch the global exposure. So there you go, that for me looks fantastic. And then you can add a bit of grain in post from the website that I showed you. And that's exactly what I did in the last video. So not much work was done, command paste, and you can see the colors are there, everything's there. Command paste. So I don't go through too much with these raw DNG clips. They look good straight off the bat. What we need to work on now is the Alexa Log C clips. So I'm gonna highlight them and drag them to the timeline as well. So let's work with these ones first. And I was using a 70 to 200 Canon zoom lens. And these are with the EOS M as well. And these clips are all exported as Alexa Log C from MLV app all shot with the Canon EOS M and Magic Lantern Raw. So let's start with this clip and then work on the skin tones of the next clip. So this looks flat. So we need to fix this log profile and make it look normal, Rec. 709. So first thing I do is go to Clips. I go over to Aces Transformation, drag that over there, and we want input. So the input is obviously Alexa Log C. Click Alexa, and we want the output to be Rec 709. So if we go over down towards the bottom, Rec 709 is just over there. So this is something that we can now play with. Now I have already graded this clip and it's just over here. So if I click apply grade, I've done the exact same thing. Alexa, exposure index set to 400 and output transformation is Rec 709. So here's what this clip looks like with Aces transformation off and then on again. So Alexa, log C and we've transformed that. We've outputted it to Rec 709. So let's see what I've done here and you can see where the red dots are and these are the only three things that I've touched. You obviously can't use camera raw because this is not raw data. So we can only use what we have here. First things first, I just adjusted the temperature. So from something that looked a bit warm, I've just made a bit more cold and then the tint. So it was a bit green and then I just lifted that up to about 47. For the HDR tools, you can see that all I've touched is exposure. Every time I want to touch the exposure for global, I always use the HDR instead of the primary and offset. HDR is what I always use. So if I reset that, you can see that's it overexposed. Bring the HDR tool down for a global exposure. And that's what I end up with. So if I go over to curves, this is where the magic takes place. If I reset the curve, you can see, yep, it looks fantastic. You know, it looks natural and organic and it looks fine. But there are a few films where I've seen like pink highlights 
you know, with film cameras. So I try to replicate that by going over to the red channel and then just hitting the midtones over there and then just bringing the highlight section up, giving it a bit of a curve, a bit of a push. So you can see the water ripples. If I lift that up, it goes a bit pink. Now we don't want to over exaggerate it. So just a little bit and then bring the higher highlights up a bit more as well. Not too much. And there you go, just about there. So if I reset the curve, you can see the difference going on there. It just adds a bit more flavor to it, a bit more texture. You can always play around with it, lower it if you need to. You can also play with the shadow and make it look like burnt film. So if I just go to the shadows, lift it slightly up a bit, you'll see you'll punch in some reds into the shadows, which gives it that washed out film look if that's what you're after. You can see that's the log profile. And then I've just gone to clips and then Asus transform. And then the settings Alexa Log C to Rec 7 and 9. So Command D to show what we've done. There you go. Go over to the next log footage that I shot on my Canon US M. And then press Command 1. And there you go. So what we need to fix now is the highlights. You can see it's really bright. And maybe we can also reduce the reds just a little bit here. So I'm going to go over to the gain and bring the gain down. All right, so you can see that we have recovered some information from the highlights. And I'm going to go over to the HDR and just bring the exposure up just a little bit and then go back and bring the gain down. All right, so there you go. That's what I'm happy with. And if you think the reds are too much, you can bring the midtones of the red just a bit down towards the blue. And there you go. That looks fine to me. Press option one and then command one to paste the settings. So that looks good to me, but I can see that we have a bit of blacks being crushed over here. So we go over to the primaries and then we just bring up the lift a little bit till we've recovered that information. From there, go back to HDR and the global exposure, bring it down a bit. And then we can go back and just lift up the gamma a bit just to fix, you know, some of that black nastiness over there. All right, and to my eye, that looks good to me. And then again, we can add some film grain in post um, just to give it that old film look. So if we go over to the curves, you can play with the pinks more. You can bring more pinks into the sky. If I reset the curves, you can see it looks quite plain and boring. And if I put the curves back in, you can see it has more character, more flavor. And that pink just gives it a nostalgic feeling. You know, this person is wandering off into the distance and it looks like it's quite a warm day as opposed to something like this. So it's all up to taste, you know, whatever floats your boat. Uh, but this is how I've graded the footage and this is the type of look and story that I want to tell. So here's before and here's after. Now we'll move over to this clip. Uh, this one's quite a challenging one. Obviously you're dealing with skin tones here. So you can use Asus Transformation which works absolutely fine. But let's go over to Color Space Transform. So at the top here we've input color space and obviously we've encoded the data from the EOS M to RE Alexa. And then for the input gamma we are using RE Log C. And there you go, that looks good straight off the bat. And then the next thing I do is go over to HDR and bring the exposure down until you're happy with the clip. So I like to bring it down to around 512, around the middle. And then from there, I can go to the primaries, bring the shadows down until I hit around zero, and then the gain up. Then I go back to HDR, global exposure, bring that down again until the bottom hit the around the zero mark. Then I go to the gamma and then bring that down until I'm happy with the skin tones level and then bring the gain up. Then I bring the gain down and then the gamma up. All right, so I'm happy with that image. I can bring the gamma just a bit further down and then the gain up again. All right, so I'm happy with how this looks. I can see there is a bit of green and then I go and white balance the clip just a little bit, bring the temperature down until I'm happy with that. And if I press Command D before with the Alexa Log C, and then after, there you go. So you can play around a bit if you want to bring more contrast into the image. I bring gamma down and then the gain up a little bit. Some people go against this. Some people don't like this method. You know, there's obviously other ways, but this is how I like it. And I always pay attention to the shadows. I don't want them to be crushed. So I just lift them up a bit until you're around the zero mark. And that looks good to me so far. I'm very happy with how this looks. Command D. So here is before and here is after. To me, that looks fantastic for a $250 EOS M. And obviously you can play with the looks, you can put LUTs in post, you know, add another node if you want. Uh, but what I like to do as well is go over to the curves 
and just play around with the curve. So put a point in the middle like we did before with the other clips. And if you put some red into the highlights if you want, or reduce that and give it a bit of a washed out film look, you know, Kodak or something like that. So these also help to bring that vintage style. If you want to put some color into the shadows, you can, you know, lift it up and down and see what look works for you. And I think I'm happy with a bit of warmth in the shadows, a bit of reds there. Okay, so Command D, and there you go. Looks fantastic. You can put some film grain over that, some Super 16 film grain, and hopefully you'll get a look that you're pleased with. So overall, I'm happy with this. I'm happy with how that looks. And obviously in post, I'll put that film grain that I showed you with that website and get that nice filmic look going. So that's pretty much it. That's how I get the film look on a budget with this Canon EOS M. You know, I'm only using one node here. A lot of people use different nodes for contrast, exposure, saturation, all that stuff. I like to keep it simple and stay with one node. And again, we're dealing with Alexa Log C to Rec. 709 using this Asus transformation that you can get from the FX library under Color Space Transform. So if you want to go back and look at what I've done, then you're more than welcome to. I'm going to put these clips up that you can, you know, feel free to mess around with and grade for yourself and see how you like them. So that's pretty much it guys, that's how I go about grading the RE Log C workflow for the Canon EOS M and Magic Lantern RAW video. If you got something out of it, then give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.